Hello, welcome to Sound and Fairy Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Not Even the Sound of a River by Helen Dorian, translated by Jonathan Kaplansky. This is a book from Book Hug Press coming out November 12th, 2024. It's a literary historical fiction novella. I received this arc from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. A somber, atmospheric, and very Canadian novel. Not even The Sound of a River is great if you're looking for something super, super moody. <laughs> What's it about? Hannah drives down the St. Lawrence River to her late mother's hometown, hoping to find out more about the distant woman who began to reveal herself only through notebooks discovered in her effects. As the river widens, so does Hannah's understanding of the matriarchs in her family. She also learns that her mother's true love, Anton, died on the river, and that her grandmother also lost a young love to the water. Both remain shipwrecked after their tragedy, their tales mirroring other survivors, such as, as the few who survived the Empress of Ireland's sinking, when more, where more than a thousand people lost their lives on the same river in 1914. Through multiple perspectives, newspaper accounts, and documents, Dorian exquisitely describes the depths of love, the reality of living when dreams have failed us, and the complex nuance of blood ties. This book is very short. I read it in like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's very rich though. It follows a woman, you know, discovering the mysteries of her mother's past and basically answers the question of why her mom was such a downer and so standoffish the woman's whole life. Yet it's also about the choices people make when they feel they have no choices and how those choices affect others. As such, we get the gist of the characters, you know, there isn't, they aren't super in depth because really the book is so short, but you know, for such a short book, you understand their motives and their actions and what compels them. You feel bad for them mainly because this book is quite sad at times. And it actually has a lot to talk about thematically, but of course a lot of that would be spoilers, so I'm not going to talk about that. But if you want something that is very rich, you should totally check this book out. Rich and short. <laughs> The way the book was told was interesting as it's imparted through date diaries, newspapers, and point of view of the daughter that moves from first person to third, which is almost like her telling her mom's stories if she's recounting it to us from what she learned from the notebooks in her own words. It's very interesting. It's really well done and it draws you in because it moves back and forth from these different kind of narrative forms very quickly. So you'll get like a snippet here, a snippet there, and then it, it's very, it kind of, flows like the tide and moves in and out from the present to the past too in a nonlinear way, keeps it immersive and interesting. You think one thing about the characters and then you learn something entirely new. It's, it's very, it's very well done in that way. There's also the inclusion of very real Empress of Ireland boat disaster that was mentioned in the jacket copy. This happened in 1914, just before the war. It was absolutely horrific. You know, thousands of people died, or over a thousand people died, including most of the children on board. The disaster overshadows the entire book in, the, in a way that is a stand-in for generational trauma, as well as literally changing the life of one of the characters. It's a bit of a period piece in that way, which was interesting as well. <laughs> as much as I love boats and the water, this book is very much not a positive water boat story. Water in this case bears with it pain and sadness. And the book does a great job of carrying that theme and that idea through. Water is just everywhere in this book. It's, it's just kind of, it envelops the entire story. And even though the, the main character, not really the main character, but the daughter is not doesn't hasn't gone through the trauma that her mother and grandmother went through she still feels it it's still kind of coding her and i think that's kind of the point of the book to show that things that happen in our parents past affect us and etc cetera, etc cetera. And, and it shows us in a really nuanced and and kind of fascinating way the language is just lovely. There are so many passages I highlighted on my tablet. Let me give you one example. This is an arc, so you know this might be removed or changed for the final. I can open it here. She swims, and as long as we swim, she tells herself, we cannot drown. She likes to feel that each sequence distances her thoughts a little more, for you don't think when you're swimming. There are too many worlds, that of tumult and beauty, or the void that grabs at you and the fullness that sustains. Too many worlds for thought to be able to interfere. I was like, I totally get that. I can swim in Lake Huron, or really any lake, for hours. For hours. Like, I did it as a kid. Like, I'd be in the water the whole time. I'd get such bad sunburns because I would never come out. Like, I wasn't never a play in the sand kind of kid. I was always in the water. And even as an adult, like, 
if we're on Lake Huron, I'm in the water. I'm in there for like, you know, a good 70% of the time. And I will swim out as far as I can before I get freaked out. And then I will come back. And I just, I just, that's the kind of feeling that it evokes in me as well. The, the fact that you really can't focus on anything else when you're swimming. And I, I just, I guess for me, it's like a really good way to escape. And that's why I would really like to go live by the lake. Anyway, um, the book also has what I believe were chapter headings. I couldn't tell because the ebook formatting was kind of wonky. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Publisher, if you watch this, email me below. I'll do your ebook arcs for you for super cheap and it'll be really nice. Uh, anyway, so the line, the, the titles though of this, these chapter headings were all lines for taken from poems. I love when books do this because I love epigraphs. Epigraphs aren't good enough nowadays, I think. Um, though I wish that it had been a little bit more obvious that these were poems because I could have like looked them up as I went along. Actually footnotes in the ebook would have been cool if you could like have them link out somewhere or even just like the title of the poem then you could search it because with my tablet because I use just like the Samsung tablet what's yeah there's stickers on it. Uh, what's nice is that if I highlight a word I can search and it just opens in Google so I could search the title of the, of the poem and open it in Google that would be really cool I could have done that but I didn't have the titles until the end and I wasn't gonna go back because <laughs> you know uh, in the words of you know one of my heroes Ursula from The Little Mermaid I'm a very busy woman and I haven't got all day overall a very lovely novella it told what I needed to tell and it did so in a beautiful way I highly recommend it if you like literary historical fiction and you want something short something kind of melancholy something great to read in November when the you know the little doldrums are coming in you know when we're starting to get kind of battened down here and the weather is getting cold and but it's not you know we're not into the Christmas season yet you know which I mean <sighs> I don't like the Christmas season. It's so commercialized. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Thank you.